and, yeah. befo and before it was bottom left, so it flips to top left. And so if, if I'm grading your like assignment here as your as your instructor, I, I'm looking for is it in the right quadrant? You know, is the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote correctly labeled? Kind of like right. you said, that that's it. I'm not looking for anything more more complicated than that. Yeah. Okay. So now when we do 11, there is a bit more to say. It's like it's like as they become more complicated, we can actually do more of the things that they're they're asking for. Okay. So it's okay. it's it's sort of the same recipe, same set of steps each time. Okay. You set for the vertical asymptote, you set the bottom equal to zero. So there's one at X, X equals zero. So that's the kind of the same as the last one. The horizontal asymptote is different this time, okay? It is Y equals three, okay? Now it is always, it is always this number off to the side. Okay, so like like whatever you see, if you see something plus or minus off to the side here, that's always going to be your horizontal asymptote. And it's a line. It's an equation of line at y equals three. So you go up three, and you got a line like that. Any questions on that so far? So I'm um, actually so the vertical asymptote. Why why is it zero again? You always set the bottom equal to zero. Oh right. Okay. Okay. So th these are sort of th these rules apply to all the problems, but and you're gonna hear me say them over and over again. Vertical asymptote, set the bottom equal to zero. Right. Horizontal asymptote, it's this number off to the right. Okay. And, and that's to help you to know what to look for. Um, sometimes when we're doing homework, like I'm not, I'm not sequencing through like, okay, let's, let's look at all the vertical asymptote problems. Let's look at all the horizontal asymptote problems. And, and that's, I think one of the you know challenges here is it's, it's all synthesis at this point. Um, so, uh, again, like think, think of your axis as, uh, having just moved up so that it's still, it's still top, uh, top right and then bottom left until further notice, until like something else causes that to change. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're adding a couple more things here, domain. So the domain, the only, the only restriction on the domain is the vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptote leads to the domain. All right, so the domain tells you like what X values are okay. And the vertical asymptote is an excluded value. So it's like in words, it would be everything except x equals zero. Because at x equals zero, you're dividing by zero. And that's bad. Like you can never divide by zero in math. Yeah. Right. But but you're not going to write it in words. Do you know if you're using interval or set notation? Um, we haven't gone over that yet. Okay, so here, here's interval notation, minus infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. Oh, yes, yes, we did do that. Okay, so, so how did, how did I do that? Or how did I know to do that? So if I, if I make a number line, and a number line goes from minus infinity to infinity, but I know that zero is excluded. This is excluded here. We show excluded with a filled in bubble, or I'm sorry, non filled in bubble. And so it's everything, it's everything from minus infinity to zero, and then everything from zero to infinity. Okay. And this, this is interval notation. So see where, see where the minus infinity comes from minus infinity to zero, and then zero to infinity. So yeah. your, do, your domain is basically broken up. It, it's broken up at the vertical asymptote. So if you have one vertical asymptote, your domain is broken up at that point. 
Okay. So it, like like a lot of words, but your domain is is everything here that's highlighted. Like all of that is your domain. This U means union operator, it means or. Okay. Any questions on that? No, I got that. Okay, so your range, your range is associated with your horizontal asymptote. Okay, so like, like once you figure out your horizontal asymptote, that leads to the range. Okay, and if you notice in the graph here, that horizontal asymptote, it's it's a, it's a dividing point. It's everything but that number. Right. Like like it approaches but never touches. It approaches but never touches. So it's kind of the same thing. It's the excluded value. Like if we were to make a number line for your range, actually let's go vertical for that because that'll make more sense here. So if we were to go vertical for your range, and this is minus infinity to infinity, and this point right here is three, and it's it's the excluded value, it's everything from minus infinity to three, three to infinity union. Yeah. So that that horizontal asymptote breaks breaks it apart. Like that's the separate point for the range, for the for the domain. It's the it's the vertical asymptote that breaks it up. So like one leads to like so we could do this in the problems. We could say find the vertical asymptote, then determine the domain, determine the horizontal asymptote, then determine the range. Like one leads to the other, leads to the other. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, this will make more sense when we do a few more examples. So, I mean, 13 we'll do next. Okay. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to make this sort of a, uh, a, a guided area. I'm going to ask you some questions along the way. So, see, see what your understanding is. Okay. All right. So, first thing you look for is the vertical asymptote. Okay, and you always set the denominator equal to zero. Right. So in this problem, you're going to set x minus one equal to zero. Mm -hmm. And then you solve for x if you need to. So what is the vertical asymptote here? So it'd be x equals one. Yes, and that's a vertical line. That's a vertical line. It's a vertical line at one. It is also which get, get you kind of caught up here, but it is also the dividing point uh, for the domain. So we're going to do domain next. Okay. All right. So the domain is everything except this value of one. So if you look, if you were to look at it on a number line, number lines go from minus infinity to infinity at one, that's the only value that's excluded. That's the, the open circle, but it can be anything else. It can be anything else. So the way interval notation works is you start with the leftmost value and then the rightmost value, and then the leftmost value to the rightmost value. But in words, it means everything but, but the value of one. Yeah. So I'm only I'm only suggesting the number line if you're really unsure how to write it, um, but it's 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 parentheses because it's excluded. Like it's saying everything up to one, but not including one. Start at one again, but don't include it and go to infinity. But then the other thing is that infinities are always parentheses. They're never, excuse me, they're never uh, they're never with brackets. Okay. All right. So that's the vertical asymptote. The horizontal asymptote, I'm trying to do that up here, the horizontal asymptote, you're, you're looking for this number that's off to the right. What what is what is off to the right here that I'm about to highlight? Zero. Yeah, zero. So you if it's if it's helpful, you even write that in plus zero. That's your horizontal asymptote, y equals zero. Okay, and that's so you got x equals one, 
you got y equals zero, okay? And that leads to your range. Okay. The range is, the only excluded value is this horizontal asymptote. Okay. Right. So could you try writing that for me? So um, or, it would or tell be, me what it would tell me what be. Yeah, go ahead. So it would be negative infinity and then comma and then it goes to oh shoot, range is up and down, right? Yeah, but it's 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 the, it's in the same way as this. Like it's whatever value you get to that's excluded, which is the which is the uh, asymptote value. So negative infinity to comma zero. And then um, the union, and then um, zero to positive infinity. Yes. Okay. And uh, and that's great. So, um, really, it, it's good to do it this way. Like maybe it'll be shown differently in class, but really, the vertical asymptote leads to domain. Horizontal asymptote leads to range. Yes. Okay. And then and then in terms of graphing it. Unless there's a uh, reflection, it's always top right and bottom left until you know otherwise. Okay. All right, uh, let's try 15. Whenever you're ready, let's get caught up. Okay, I'm ready. All right, so I want you to determine the vertical asymptote. And if you have any questions, please ask, but I want the equation of the vertical asymptote for this one. Okay. Just write it down. So the vertical asymptote would be, so you could set it equal to zero, so x plus two equals zero, so then x would equal negative two. Very good. And and oh, another point here is I like to graph as you go. Some instructors wait until the end. I think it's better to do it as you as you uh, find stuff. Okay. Okay, very good. Now, can you tell me the domain? So the domain would be um, negative infinity to negative two. Okay. And then um, the union. Good. And then um, it'd be negative two to positive infinity. Perfect. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, so you might see a plus with the infinity on the right. If you don't, it's considered positive if you don't write anything. Okay. All right, so then uh, the next thing here is to determine the horizontal asymptote. So can you uh... So the horizontal asymptote would be zero. Y equals zero. It's an equation. So yes. uh, if yeah, if they're being very critical, you know, make sure you write the full equation out. Okay. All right, so now what is the range? So the range would be negative infinity to um, zero, and then union, and then zero to positive infinity. Good, good. Okay. Now, now there's there's other things we can graph, uh, like the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts, but it's not asking for that, so we're not going to we're not going to emphasize that too much at the moment. Um, we'll get to that maybe in some later problems. But we do have to pay attention to this right here. What does that do? Do you remember from earlier from class? What did you point out again? The uh, highlighted uh, negative in front of the three. Do you remember what oh, that does? It flips the, um, yeah, it flips so it's, the number. The, it flips the equation, uh, the graph. So instead of it being up here, top right, it's now bottom right. Yeah. 
And instead of being lower left, it's now upper left. Right. And uh, it's easy to miss that just if you're, you know, going through these things. Yeah. I probably would have missed that, but if you didn't say anything. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, because you get so deep into this other stuff, you're like, oh, yeah, I forgot I got to go back and look at all that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's do, uh, let's do 17. We're doing well here. Um, the next grouping is pretty fast, and then and then uh, some more graphs at the end. So they probably get through everything here. Okay. All right. So for seventeen, I'm gonna just ask you to do a bit more. Um, want you to tell me the equation of the vertical asymptote, the domain, a horizontal asymptote, and then the range. I'll, you know, whenever take as much time as you need here, but see what you come up with, please. Okay. All right, so wait, one more. So the vertical asymptote um, is going to be x equals uh, positive four. That's correct. And then, so the domain would be negative infinity to four union four to uh, positive infinity. Good. And then the horizontal asymptote would be negative one. It's got to be an equation, though. Y equals negative one. Yeah. Then the range would be um, negative infinity, comma, one, negative one. And then union, negative one, comma, infinity. And then there's a negative on the top or the numerator. That's right. And that affects the graph. Yes. So it looks like this and then like this. And we'll, we'll, you will learn how to get it more, more accurate than this. But for now, I think it's OK that it's, it's this sort of um, using just this approach. So let me know when you get that down, we'll move on to uh, the next grouping of problems. Okay. Good. All right, so the next one's a matching. And the uh, way we're gonna do this is, is you wanna essentially identify both uh, vertical and horizontal asymptotes. And you, you actually start with the graphs. Actually, let me let me do this backwards here. So uh, what I mean is, I want you to look at graph A. And if it's not if it's not big enough to see, I'll, I'll I'll I can change it different. But can you tell me the equation of the horizontal asymptote and the vertical asymptote? Um, like All just right, by. Yeah, let's not, let's, let's not let's not do that. Let's uh let's do it the other way. Okay. All right. I was trying to I was trying to at that thought that we could do it that way. And that's and you will be able to just not right at the moment. Okay. So let's look at let's look at 21 and and no domain arrange this time, just the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so the vertical asymptote for 21 is gonna be x equals three. Okay. And then the horizontal asymptote is y equals one. Okay. So there are four graphs to your right. Only one of them has this matching uh, characteristic of a vertical asymptote at three, vertical line at three, horizontal line at one. Um, I think it's B. Or no, no, it's A. It is A. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing for 22. You gotta come up with the vertical asymptote and then the horizontal asymptote. So the vertical asymptote is x equals negative three. 
Uh, say that again. Yes, negative three, and then the yeah. horizontal asymptote. Y equals one. So then it would be, uh, let me see. It would be C, no, wait, D. <laughs> Uh, you're so I think you're getting the I think you're tr you got to use the red ones. Uh, you had it right. The C is the is above. Oh yeah, the D would be negative one. Yes. Yeah. C. Okay. Okay. So do the same thing for twenty three. Vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote. So x equals. Uh, positive three. Okay. And then y equals negative one. Okay. So which one is that? And you're down to two options. So it'd be B. It'd be B. And then uh, by by default, the next one is D. Yes. By the fact there's no, no other ones there. Okay. I don't, I mean, I don't know if you'd get a question like that on a quiz because it's, it's, but it, like what I think, well, the, the way we did it, I also want you to be able to go backwards, which if we have time for, we'll do that again. But uh, that that is something you may, may end up uh, getting. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's look at, uh, let's look at 25 and uh 25 through 31 so these are these are kind of like the ones we just did uh you know math is full of of these exceptions so like some of the things i told you before are true and some are not um that's just the way this math goes you know it's just not perfect so we still are going to start with vertical asymptote that is the same that is absolutely uh the same so okay. can, can you tell me the vertical asymptote of this one it would be x equals three. Okay. And then uh, domain, domain is minus infinity to three, union three to infinity. And like that, graph that line over here at x equals three. Okay. Horizontal asymptote is slightly different. You know, there, there's no number off to the right here, but, but and this is really important, is there's an X now in both the top and the bottom. So if you go back and you look at all the problems we did before, only one X in the bottom, only one X in the bottom, only one X in the bottom, and so on. So when you have an X in both the top and the bottom, you have to do something different to determine the horizontal asymptote, okay? And that's what we're gonna talk about right now. So there's actually, and I'm gonna write this in a different color here, there's actually a one and a one in front of the X. And, and and if you look ahead, like two other problems, it's not always one and one, but the horizontal asymptote is the ratio of these numbers. Ratio of the numbers in front of X. And this is a bit of a simplification, but it works. It works for now. Yeah. Okay, so it, it it's Y equals one. So what you've got to look for is the two types. There's really type one where there's only one X on the bottom and there's this type where there's an X in the top and the bottom, slightly different rule for horizontal asymptote. The domain though is the same. You have to, you, you find, I'm sorry, the range is the same. You find the range the exact same way as we've been doing. So it would be minus infinity to positive one, union positive one to infinity. Is that okay for now? Wait, so if, so when, when do you do that for a horizontal asymptote when there's two so, on the new? Well, there's an, there's an X both in the top and the bottom. What I was trying to show you here is that in all the previous problems we had done, there was only an X on the bottom. And yeah. then the horizontal asymptote was this number. Yeah. X on the, only an X on the bottom plus zero only an X on the bottom plus zero, but this problem has an X in the top and the bottom. Yeah. So when you have an X in the top and the bottom, it's this other approach 
where you take the ratio of the numbers in front of x. Basically, you divide them. One, one, the one in front of the x divided by the one in front of the x. Right. Okay, and, and we'll do another, we're gonna do three more problems. So it, you'll, you'll at least see the pattern, but you, what you have to know is you have to be able to distinguish between them. Like, is it one of these? Or is it, you know, or is it one over X minus three plus four? And then it's different. Yeah. Do you see, do you see the difference? Like these are written differently? Yes. There's like one set of rules for the one on the right that we've been doing. We've, we've done a bunch of those, but now we're giving it to you in a different form and saying, how do you do this one? Yeah. It, it's, it's similar to like, like here's vertex form of a quadratic. Uh, and then, oh, here's the standard form of a quadratic. They're related, but they're not the same. Right. And, that, and that's what I'm attempting to, to um, explain here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now, uh, in terms of like whether the graph flips or not, it's based on, it's based on um, whether there's a negative in front of the X and, and there is not at the moment. Okay. So we'll do we'll do twenty seven. Twenty seven is like twenty five. You know, very very much the same sequencing of questions, and then uh, you know, hopefully there's a little more clarity on this. And if you have questions, please ask I me. Mean, please just stop me and say I don't understand. This is really unclear. I mean, we're pretty close to getting all the questions done, so I think. Yeah, it'd, it'd be worth it to spend some time to answer your questions if needed. Yeah. But um, so here's your here's your new problem here. Like I said, the horse, the vertical asymptote is the same. You do the vertical asymptote exactly the same as before. You set right. the bottom equal to zero. So could you find the vertical asymptote for us, please? Yeah. It would be x equals negative two. Uh, try again. Or positive two. Yes, and and that really matters. That you know, it, it's it's completely in the wrong side of the graph. It's hard to give partial credit on these. They're not graphed. Yeah. Okay. So now, give me the domain. What is the domain of this one? It would be um, negative infinity. Okay, I'm uh, I'm having a you go ahead and keep talking. I'm having a technical problem. There it is. Okay, negative infinity to two, and then um, two or union, and then two to infinity. Good, good, very good. So the horizontal asymptote that's that's the different one. That's the yeah. one that's that's different. So there's really a one in front of the x. And there's a okay. four in front of the X in the bottom. So the horizontal asymptote is one divided by four. It's it's the ratio of these leading coefficients. Right. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's not, you know, it's not quite one. Your instructor just wants to see that it's not exact. I mean, it's not at one, it's not at zero. It's, it's in between closer to zero. Okay. Right. And then now uh, tell me about the range now. What is the range? Um, the range would be a negative infinity to one divided by four, and then you, and then a uh, one fourth to uh, negative or infinity. Yes, and the the infinities always get the parentheses, and if there's a horizontal asymptote or vertical asymptote, use the uh, parentheses instead. Right. Okay. And since there's no negative, you know, you just go top right, bottom left. We should at some point do what's called the x-intercept and the y-intercept to help with these graphs, but I'm going to exclude it from our from our discussion for right now until we get this other stuff down, then we can, you know, talk about it next time. Or you're going to be doing this for a while, these graphs for a few lessons. So um, just try and try and keep it simple. Yeah. All right, so for 29, 
I want you to determine the vertical asymptote domain, horizontal asymptote, and range, please. Okay, so the um, the vertical asymptote would be negative four over five. Uh, try again, and and please, you know, I work this out. You know, it's it it's it's easy to make the mistake that you just did, and it it sounded similar to what happened here. Uh, you got to just work it out. Be be sure your signs are all all correct. Oh, so it'd be negative five over four. So just this. Um. Yeah. Let's go back and look. What did we write every time for vertical asymptote? Or x equals, sorry, x equals. Yeah, it's, it's such a small thing. Like, it's not wrong what you're saying. It's just, it's not complete. You know, it's like, yeah. uh, you know, right, it's right there. And and you, maybe you're graded on that. I'm not sure. Uh, so that's a little bit bigger than one. So draw a little vertical line there, a little bigger than negative one, I mean, past negative one. Now, um, how about your domain? What is your domain? It would be negative infinity to um, negative five over four, and then okay. u, and then negative five over four to infinity. Good, good. Gotta have those parentheses. Uh, the u stands for union, or it means or logic, or. Okay. Yeah. Good. good. Um, now, what about the horizontal asymptote? It would be um, y equals negative five over four. Yes, now while it doesn't happen all that often, they can be the same numbers. Yeah. It's just, they're usually not. Um, okay. Range is minus infinity to minus five over four. Union minus five over four to infinity. Okay, and then um, this negative up here in front of the 5x, this negative in front of the 5x, that does flip it. So it's lower right and then top, top left. Okay. All right, so let's do uh, let's do the last one here. Then we'll try some other problems. The time we've got here, so I'd like you to like you to try this one start to finish. You know, make the graph um, after you find the horizontal asymptote, vertical asymptote, domain, then horizontal asymptote, then range, and uh, the the one little thing here I guess I should say is that these. These two minuses, they do cancel when you're, so you're not going to flip it. Okay. But uh, other than that, uh, give give this one a try here, please. Okay. And uh, I'll uh, check back with you in a minute or two, and then I'll, I'll work it out or give you the answers. Okay. Okay. All right. So let me uh, uh, 
Do you have Do you have a question, or do you uh, Do you want me to just start working through it so you can see if you got it right or not? I think I finished it. Okay, so the vertical asymptote is at x equals minus three over two. Is that what you have? Yes. Okay, and then the domain is minus infinity to minus three over two. You don't normally say parentheses, but I'm assuming you you know that they're there. Uh, that's just a small little thing there. Horizontal asymptote is y equals five over two. The negatives cancel. So like it would be like it would be negative five over negative two, but they cancel. Right. Okay, so you got negative three halves there. Five halves there, that's 2.5 ish. Okay. Range would be minus infinity to five halves, union five halves to infinity. And then uh, normally you would you would think these would th the negative would cause to flip, but because they're a negative in both spots, and and you'll get more information on that here and some upcoming problems. It looks top right, bottom, bottom left there. Actually, that is wrong. Um, we I, I so I've been I've been ex <laughs> actually it actually is bottom right. Um, we can talk about that for this one. Top left. Yeah. Um, so so there there so there's a bit more here, and I think it's fine. It's fine. We should finally like move into like all the little pieces that you need as well. So there's a couple other things that we've not talked about in this lesson. So we can we can look at those now. Um, okay. So let's look at. We kind of have to, okay, yeah, it's not great because we kind of have to look at both forms. Let's just, let me just make one up here. Let's say it's y equals x minus two over x plus one, something like this. So we'll look at this together here. The vertical asymptote is when x plus one equals zero. So that's at x equals minus one. The horizontal asymptote is the ratio of the leading coefficient. So it's one over one like that. Okay, but there's other things that we care about when we're graphing. So those two things are the x-intercept, excuse me, and the y-intercept. Did you talk about that in class? Yes, we did. Okay, now I, I, I think it was good. Uh, I think it was good to do it without, um, I think it was good to like exclude these because they're not that hard, but they, did, they would distract a little bit. So the x-intercept, you set the numerator equal to zero, but only when it's in this form. Okay, so so sometimes you set the denominator equal to zero, sometimes you set the numerator equal to zero. So this would be x equals two. For the y-intercept, you put zero in for x. So that's zero minus two over zero plus one. And you can see that that simplifies to minus two over positive one or negative two. Yeah. Okay, so, so these are these are both new. You know, X-intercept, you set the numerator equal to zero. Y-intercept, you put zero in for X. Right. All right, so let's look at one more example. We got time for one more example here. Let's go Y equals uh, three X minus six over x plus two. Uh, and let's just do the x-intercept and the y-intercept, okay? So when it's in this form, when it's in this form where there's an x in the top and the bottom, your x-intercept, you set the numerator, numerator equal to zero. So you set three x minus six equal to zero. Yeah. And you, and you solve for x. So you add six to both sides, divide by three, and you get x equals two. Okay, for the y-intercept, you put zero in for x. So that's three times zero minus six over zero plus two. And this becomes minus six over two or negative three.
Okay, now just last point here, we're, we're just really short on time, is these are actually ordered pairs. So the x-intercept is two, zero, the y-intercept is zero comma negative three. Okay. So, so in full disclosure, all the graphs we did, we should have made x-intercepts and y-intercepts, but they take this extra step and they're close enough for now, but, but for like a test or a quiz, you definitely would want to uh, have that down. Yeah. So, so let me go ahead and just stop recording.